there's an old saying that you want to have an open mind, but you don't want it to be so open that your brains fall out. That sounds kind of gross. I don't think I would like that at all. Hey, Ruff Ruffman here. You know, back in the day, I hosted my own game show. It was called Fetch, so that made me pretty famous. Uh, well, that and my YouTube cooking show clip that went viral. And that is how you make saucisse avec crème fouettée. Oh, 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 this is just a hot dog with whipped cream. Chat, turn the camera off. <clears throat> but now, I'm Ruff Ruffman content creator. And today, I'm talking with Joe Hansen, award-winning science journalist and the host of Be Smart. And we're going to be talking about finding information you can trust. Joe, welcome to the show. Hey, Ruff. I'm really happy to be here. Okay, so your video series is called Be Smart. Now, is that a command for me to be smart? Or are you just saying, like, you can make me smart if I watch the show? Uh, well, you know, it's a, a friendly suggestion. It's certainly an invitation. I think that living your life in a smart way is a good way to do it. I don't like to tell people what to think. More like how to think. And how to walk through the world as a curious person, I guess, that's always learning. But I guess to do that, you got to find what's true, right? That's true. Now, when you're explaining science, it's not an exact science all the time. How do you research for your videos? Where do you go to find trusted information? So I used to be an actual working scientist. Most of what working scientists do is look for information. They're professional, like, information finders and filterers. So what I do now when I'm, when I'm making YouTube videos, you know, I want to share the best, greatest, most true information. I don't want to make mistakes, although it does, it does sometimes happen. I start by talking to people who are experts. And how do you know if somebody really knows what they're talking about? You look for what they're telling the world about their expertise. Do they have a special degree? Do they work someplace where they're actually working on that thing all the time? And for me, it's about seeing that people are being transparent and sharing with me why I should trust them. Because trust is something that is earned. It's not something we should ever assume. Try to always be skeptical. There's an old saying that you want to have an open mind, but you don't want it to be so open that your brains fall out. That sounds kind of gross. I don't think I would like that at all. So you've learned over time where to find factual information in your field, how to know what you can trust and what you can't trust. But what about for regular dogs like me? Well, I think it's about looking for warning signs when someone is giving you information. So one of those is, well, where do we find stuff so often today is on social media? What do they really want from you? They want you to stay on that app, stay on that website for as long as possible. So often we see somebody that says they are, want to share you with the great truth that's been hidden from you for your whole life. Oh, I've seen that a thousand times. And then the solution just costs nineteen ninety five, which you can deliver here by PayPal or Venmo. That is another red flag. Now, another thing is, are they actively disagreeing with basically every published expert that's out there? Now, we all like the hero, right? But... That's not always how it works. There's a reason that things are accepted as true, and that's because a lot of people have tried to break an idea and prove it false, and they just haven't been able to. So when a lot of people who are experts agree about something, that is, in fact, something we should listen to. But this just sort of gets at the whole thing that is science, which it is constantly changing, and that can make people uncomfortable. And so we should actually kind of feel good when things are being corrected and when, when we're changing our mind on purpose. It shows that we're willing to change and evolve. But when it's just you talking to the audience, you have a, more of a responsibility to make that correction face-to-face. -face. You don't want to be accused of misinformation or disinformation. And by the way, I don't even know what the difference is between those. They feel like that's the same thing. Is intent the difference? Misinformation is something anyone can accidentally be guilty of. You know, we make a mistake, we put out information that's wrong, but maybe not on purpose. But disinformation, well, that's somebody 
actively putting bad information out there to either make it harder to find the good information or to just get people to believe that for the, you know, when they hear it for the first time. So those, there is a difference there, but they both are things that aren't true and that need to be corrected. If a wildfire blazes through a forest, you know, just because you put it out, the trees don't just instantly come back. Trust takes so long to earn and to build, and it can be lost just like that. Joe, this is fantastic. I love learning about you and learning about science and learning about how to find information and how to process it. Thanks for having me. Okay, a big thank you to Joe Hansen for helping us all find information we can trust. But now I must away, for I am starring in Romeo and Juliet, two sides of the sandwich at our local deli theater DMV. This is ridiculous the jobs I take. <laughs>